Hello and welcome to another episode of In Real Life. I hope that you are well and that this week has been a good one for you. We've got a really juicy topic today, haven't we, Pete? Yeah, one we're looking forward to, Kamiji. So, uh, yeah, the basis of Christianity in many ways, isn't it? So very Absolutely. fundamental, but so profound. Um, and if we get it right, just a, a, a whole new adventure of discovery in front of us. And that's the thing. It's adventure, isn't it? So the topic today is something that you're going to love. It is about God being love. It is about the love of God, but also him being love. So Pete, kick us off. Tell us what you think about God being love. Yeah, I, I, it's something I've thought about a lot over the years and uh, taught about a lot. And it's one of the things that I think God has increasingly revealed to me, which I, I it's one of the beautiful things about Christianity, isn't it? Is the increasing revelation that you get throughout your Christian journey. It's not just you've learned some facts and then you just got to carry on with those throughout life. Um, and I often talk to, uh, to Eastgate Church and our, the students on our School of Spiritual Life that if God is infinite and eternal, then there's always more to discover of, of who he is. Mm. And um, there's that beautiful verse in the Bible which says, God is love. I think you've, I think you've got it on your, open on your Bible, haven't you? Yeah, 1 John 4, 16. Read it, out, read it out, it's good. Yeah, so it says, and we know and believe that God, that God, what God has for us, God is love and he who abides in God and God in him. I think I read that a little bit wrong, but God is love is the main point in 1 John 4, 16. Yeah. And I think um, God loves us. Now, we all know that God so loves the world that he sent his son. His, his love is so compelling that he has to do something with it. And the, he's not an inactive God. So that concept of God loves us is, is, is fundamental. But um, over the years, I, I've you know, had people say to me, oh, I don't know if God loves me. I'm not quite sure. And, and, um, and there were even some songs, that worship songs, which I came to d- dislike, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I say that, but uh, we all have them. Don't worry. It irritated me. Which was there was one song in particular, and it's not you know. There was, it just said, "I I will never understand why God loves me." You know, kind of thing. I'm thinking mm. ah, that's a terrible that's a terrible line because I understand why God loves me. Now that might sound and some people say well, that's arrogant, and the reality is God doesn't love me because of me at all. He loves me because He is love. He can't deny Himself. It's what the Bible says that that if we are faithless, He remains faithful because he can't deny himself he can't deny his very nature is what it means and his very nature is love he is he is love so the reason that God loves me is because of his nature so he can't stop loving me because he's faithful to himself um, now that gives me an absolute sure foundation to rest upon I know he loves me because of who he is not because of who I am or what I've done um, and because he he's never changing and he's always faithful so the fact that God is love is the reason that I know he loves me. And it takes away all performance or any doubt for me. Mm. So I don't wake up in the morning wondering, oh, I wonder whether God loves me. I, I know because of who he is. He's constant and eternal. That's so profound and so mind-blowingly simple at the same time. I think for a lot of people who are hearing this, just hearing that, whether it's for the first time or whether it's an echo of what they already know, it's just like... It really has nothing to do with us. I mean, the point, the point that he is who he is, that that integrity can't change. He is love. And then we get invited into that. Yeah. That's incredible. I think it's how we respond to that truth and how we receive it. So I think, yeah. you know, the Bible is quite clear that, that some people don't receive. Now, that, and that that's down on our, our end of the equation, you know, actually, if you, there are various reasons, and it's a study I've done and taught around over the last few months is, is why we don't get our prayers answered, because actually there's something wrong on our end of the equation that, that's, that if like, it's like losing your Wi-Fi signal or your, something's wrong, the signal's still out there, it's just that you've lost connection somehow, and um, no, I often say that, you know, how, how many of us have had that, you know, Recently, you, somehow you've lost your Wi-Fi signal. You, so, but you don't think there's no Wi-Fi. You just think, mm. I've lost signal. And Absolutely. So, so God's, God is there, um, but somehow if we lose the signal, there's something wrong with our connection, and that, that's the problem. So, um, so he, he is he's so constant. And I think it's so true in, in, in so many different uh, parts of our Christianity that, that an encounter with, with, with that aspect of God's nature mm. actually changes us. And... Um, that was one of the things I was talking about, I think it was last week, 
um, when I was you know, challenged by that cancer threat and I, and I was struggling to get through it and I was struggling to get peace. You know, and I, I was really struggling. And then I met the God of peace and it all changed because actually that is it. And, and one of the other things that I, you, know, you and I were just talking about was the fact that I think often in Christianity, we, we, we have a, an idea that at the beginning of our Christian life, when we're born again, we ask Jesus into our life. And I, I, I say, I don't think that's true. I think actually what Jesus does, Jesus invites us in, in, into his life and we get to participate in his life rather than he helps us out with ours. It's, it's sort of the wrong, wrong way around. Um, so we get grafted into his vine. You know, I think that's mm-hmm. one of the things that your verse was saying. So we, we, we become partakers of his nature. That's an amazing verse. Actually, I'll, I'll read that out. In, in, it's in 2 Peter 1, verse, um, well, verse 3, I love it. It says, verse 3 and 4, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Isn't that amazing? Everything we need for life and godliness. Through our knowledge of him, that means our not just our theory of him, but our experiential knowledge of who he is. Um, and who called, <coughs> not through our knowledge of him, who called us by his own glory and goodness, through these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. Isn't that amazing? So, it's amazing. I'm yeah. actually getting a little bit emotional. <laughs> It's um it's a bit of a dream come true, and I think sometimes we um we do put a lot of weight on our decisions, our life, and there is a responsibility because it's a relationship. But to be grafted into into him, to be grafted into the family, to be adopted, to be brought into that love which which can't be changed, which you know is just perfect, is actually a dream come true. And um, I've been watching a lot of Disney recently because I, I live with my nephews right now. And honestly, Disney's at, Disney is so incredible at helping the imagination visualise beauty. Mm. And a lot of the time, I think what Disney's trying to epitomise is true love. And it is so incredible to watch my nephews' faces just overwhelmed with something that mm. they never expected to be able to encounter. And what you're talking about... <laughs> is something far better than what Disney could could com- could try and convey or um, could try and epitomise. He is the source of love. And when we know him and when we're intimate with him, we encounter love. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit more about encountering love? Tell us about what that looks like in, in your life. Yeah, or... I, th- I think, again, another verse that, that, that helps, I think, us understand this is it talks about in Ephesians, it says that, that you may have power to grasp how high and wide and long and deep is the love of God. Now you think, oh, yeah. I might have power to do that? What, what, what does that mean? It, I think sometimes we think of love as that, the nice gooey bit, you know, and, and, uh, that, and I think, mm-hmm. again, it's something else I've been teaching in, in, uh, in, in Eastgate with, with the school, is that I think we have a definition of intimacy, which is, which is this is not sexist, but it's much more feminine than masculine. Do you understand? Mm, it, 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 yeah. it, it, it's just, oh, that, that, it. whereas actually intimacy can be rugged, you know, it's, it's, mm. and, and it, it, there's a power to grasp. And, and so in my experience, I've had some extraordinary encounters with the power of God where I've literally been overwhelmed, literally, literally knocked off my feet, literally, you know, put on yeah. the floor, sometimes just, just God encountering me and I just fall to my knees in awe as I... I I'm given a revelation of who he is. Yeah. It's happened to me repeatedly throughout my life. And those are moments when I suddenly, I have, have a, a, a new grasp of, of mm. who God is. That, that, that's what, so I, I, there's, there's something, there's a powerful encounter with the living God. Now I've had the, the gentle ones as well, and mm. he whispers to me. Um, so they come in all sorts of, of, of different varieties, I would say, and for different people. But, I think the, the, the power of it is, is, is it has a powerful, literally, impact when you think you're suddenly overwhelmed by God. Uh, yeah. I think of um, the Apostle John in the book of Revelation. It says that he encountered Jesus and he fell down as dead. You know, Now, mm. that, that's a guy who was pretty familiar with Jesus. He, he'd actually had his head on his chest at the Last Supper. He, he, you know, he knew Jesus intimately. He was many, many, many years into his Christianity, and yet he had a another encounter with the living God that overwhelmed him. Mm. 
And I, so I embrace those and, and I, I encourage people to seek those sort of opportunities. You can't make them in one sense, but, but when something's happening, particularly if you hear something where God is active, I, I encourage people, get there, pressing, whether, whether it's Absolutely. in a meeting, whether it's in a, some other place, go and encounter God. Absolutely. And um, it's funny because sometimes um, as much as, so God is love, full stop. But when you just said that, it reminded me of when I was at ESSL doing my first year. And um, you talked about how, like, if you notice that something's happening somewhere, go there. Go there and, and you know, get involved. Um, and so basically that's something that I'm talking about is where people are encountering God. Um, and God abides in us, full stop. Um, but like you said, sometimes it's very difficult to, to make that happen. You can't make it happen. But what I'm saying is, if you notice that God is calling you to something, I think, if you notice, sometimes God sometimes just whispers something in my ear or, or gives me an inkling that there's going to be an encounter, like a really amazing encounter. And yes, you can know the closeness of God by laying on his, on his, on his chest or whatever. But if God is calling you to a new encounter and a new experience where you can know the, how deep his love is, go to it, stop your day where you're having a cup of tea and just listen to him or just pull in and draw near. Because honestly, those moments that where I've done that and I've encountered God's love to a new intensity have changed my life. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think the love of God is not a theory, is it? It's, no. It's, 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 a, it's a daily reality that we live with, we we. we feel it we understand it um it's like you know i've been married to kim nearly 40 years you know we, we have a daily love going on um mm. but that's expressed in so many different ways you know and, and you know uh, uh, we know we love each other do you understand that that's a, yeah. a foundation of our marriage so so but that it looks different and you know it takes special times but you know there are moments when you actually go for it and i it is something really important that i do encourage people that that um you know i say simple little thing if you want to be on fire for god and you're a bit not then go 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 where the fire is you know that yeah. you catch fire by going close to fire and it's mm. very straightforward and it works you know it will catch you on fire and i think this is another principle that it, god says he gives grace to the humble mm. and opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble then I, there's a humility in admitting that somebody else somewhere else some other thing has got something that you can learn and benefit from yeah. rather than well, I'm the expert. I know everything. I don't need that. That if that then you really have switched off. Once yeah. if you become an expert, think oh, I know it all. I've got it. Then your voyage of discovery has ended, and um, you've closed it off for yourself. Not God has never closed it off. And suddenly you've you've locked the doors on that uh, the adventure of discovering the God of the infinite and eternal. And mm. so I think that humility to actually just say, hey, that, that, those people have got something. I'd love to benefit from it. You no, know? and and. I, th I think that's really important. And an, uh, an example that goes back many years, you know, uh, the, the manifestation, if you like to call it, of, of laughter that, that, that mm -hmm. overwhelmed the church through the, you know, 1994 and, and other times. And, um, and people, I heard some people say, well, I'm only going to laugh if, 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 if God makes me, if it really, if, if, for it to be genuine, mm -hmm. you know, God's got to make me laugh. Otherwise, I'm just making up it's, it's coming from my flesh and I thought it's a silly idea really isn't it because it's like I'll only worship if God works my mouth you know yeah you know, so somehow that's a that has to be an involuntary part of me for it mm. to really be genuine that, that you know I, I when I pray I pray out loud I use my mouth I use my language so mm. the idea that I would actually get close and, and laughter is good laughter is contagious isn't it and yeah very well, go for it. You know, <laughs> what's not to like having a good laugh? And it's, it's sort of as if that's an ingenuine experience of God. It's mm. not. God laughs. God, he says it. God laughs at his enemies. He's, he's, he's so unfazed by, by enemy action that he says, oh, <laughs> not, not a problem. Well, Absolutely. that would be a good place to get to, wouldn't it? That I'm so unfazed by the devil's activity that I could laugh. Um, not that I find it irrelevant. It's just that, wow, he was in me. He's greater than that. It's, Amen. Those are the sort of realities that, that help us to live in, in, in victory, I think. And so I, I really try, and, and I, this is, I think it's a challenge for anybody who's been a Christian a length of time, not to become an expert, mm. always mm. be the learner. So good. I love that.
And that's the thing. We're always going to be in a position of learning with him anyway, because he's got so much more to show us. Mm. So having that heart is, is definitely a good, a good place to position yourself in. You just talked about intentionality versus the involuntary kind of response. I think that's such a great thing to talk about when it comes to a love-centered relationship, where you're in a relationship with love. I think God loves to see us choose, doesn't he? And to go, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm like, he loves to listen to us and to, to us as children to, sh- to see that we're actually learning. At, I'm going to go near the fire. Fantastic. It's not a formula, but it's something that we know we can do in order to encounter him. Um, so I think there's re- something really on that intentionality as well as just being an everyday kind of love. Um, yeah. You talked about... Um, it was a few weeks ago, you talked about, I think we, we mentioned identity and identity is something that we're talking about today now as well. I love the term beloved. Talk to me about beloved. That is part of our identity. And, and why is that significant in this time right now? Um, good question. So I'm just thinking... <clears throat> Beloved, I always think, beloved is, is an expression of I understand that I am, I am loved, uh, yeah. that I'm his beloved one. Um, and, uh, you know, he created me uh, as an expression of, of his love. And it talks about being made in his image. Um, so we are made to, to be carriers of love because he, he is love. And I just think there's that, that, again, it gives us a security to it. But like in... Like in my marriage to Kim, no, she's my beloved one. You know, we've yeah. been married, we've been together, as I said, almost 40 years. Um, and we know that, just so we're secure, but we have to express it, otherwise it becomes stale. And, mm. and I think I express it to God, but also God wants to express his love to me in a way that's not stale. You know, the, 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 so if I just think, oh, yeah, I know, I'm, a, I'm his beloved one, yeah, and we've been together for... 40 years now, you know, and <laughs> eventually we get to heaven and whew, maybe, maybe, maybe there's something new up there for me to discover. That, that's a, that would be a, that's a strange relationship. But I think, I think Christians can, can slide into that um, familiarity. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, so I never want to become familiar with the love of God. I want it to be a foundation upon, but I want to always be excited by it, but always, discovering more of, of who he is and that that and his love is expressed in so many different ways um, yeah. and he loves me so he gives me peace he loves me because he, he provides for me he loves me so he heals the sick you know it's it's all I think a lot of basically it says um what's the other person it says that what matters is faith working through love that, that's a so our activity of faith needs to be put in the context of love so so the fact that God is love gives us a context for, for the operation of our Christian life. So I think that's yeah, it's fundamentally important. Without love, we're, we're basically noisy symbols, just making Absolutely. noise out there, which is not attractive. That's a really good word for this time. I think there's a lot of stuff happening mm. and um, a lot of good things happening as well. But at the same time, like, let's anchor ourselves, let's centre ourselves in love. And I think you can keep this relationship spicy. I know that might not be at the forefront of people's minds at the moment because you are under pressure a lot of the time we are experiencing good things happening as well but during this really uh, intense time I think sometimes people don't think about how the everyday can become a little bit familiar and monotonous in terms of our relationship with God but to spice it up I think there's nothing better than taking yourself out of your comfort zone and as you said letting our faith be worked out of love and And I think our faith is tested so much these days by fear. But it says in um, Romans 8.15, I think it is, um, it says that we should cry Abba Father um, and that um, we've not received a spirit of bondage against fear, we've received um, a spirit of adoption. Again, it's that we are, our identity is in him and he loves us and if you want to keep it spicy, step out of your comfort zone today and, and let him in, like show you how his love can fuel your faith um, during these interesting times. Yeah, just one more thing on that. I think the, the teaching and training that God takes us through, through difficult times, is another aspect of his love. He loves us so much that yeah. he wants us to come to maturity. And 
you know, Jesus said, I won't, I'm not going to take you out of the world. No. And the world has its troubles. So that, that's, a, that's a context in which we have to live. You know, God loves us and we live in a world that has troubles. So, so being in troubled times is not, not a demonstration that God doesn't love us at all. Yeah. That, that's a ridiculous idea. And so if we, if we judge whether God loves us, whether we're having a, a perfectly easy time or we're in troubled times, we're in, we've made his love very limited. Mm. Um, so, so the fact that he loves me constantly, and, and, but through troubled times, there, there are some of the times, the opportunities for the greatest growth in our understanding yeah. of who God, God is. So, so that they, they're worth embracing. So this is a time to embrace um, not because I, I'm enjoying it. Do you understand? I don't embrace it because, oh, this is lovely. I'm embracing it as a learning opportunity. Yeah. And I think that's, fun, you know, this, this is such a unique opportunity that I'm hoping I don't revisit, <laughs> revisit this opportunity. Um, <laughs> that was, I, this is probably, I know we need to sort of come into a land, but this is one thing I learned very early. God is an extremely good teacher mm. and he's quite capable of repeating the lesson if, if I don't learn the first time around. Now, as a teacher, you'd know that. If your pupils don't learn, you repeat the lesson. Well, I'd say, You've got to learn I'm, it. I'm, up for, I'm up for learning whatever's, whatever's coming my way in this period of time and learn quickly um, because that will make you stronger. It just, it's sensible. I, I've learned to be a very quick learner. Uh, otherwise, God might take me around the loop again. Absolutely. Because he loves me. Because he loves you, exactly. And that's all he has for us, his love. So good. Well, this has been a fantastic conversation. I think we crammed so much in this Yeah, we've time. gone on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good, guys. I hope you took something from that. Um, share it with others, please. This is a time where people need to hear about the love of God. So have a lovely week. Praying blessings over you and see you next time.